A seemingly casual but potentially serious ecological problem is unfolding right now in Brazil. Fish that were genetically engineered to glow in different colors under black light in a confined setting in an aquarium have escaped into natural water bodies and are now multiplying in creeks in different parts of Brazil. This is a very rare occurrence of a transgenic species escaping accidentally and establishing itself in nature and it is a matter of concern because the exotic fish, the alien fish, threaten local ecosystem in a very biodiverse area of the planet. In this video, we'll talk about how these fish, these zebra fish that were genetically modified to glow, escaped and how non-native species harm ecosystems. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The fish here, the zebra fish, are not a new species or anything. We are actually very familiar with these fish. Scientists have worked with them for decades, especially to study genetics. The zebra fish is a model organism and plays a very important role in drug development as well. It has regenerative abilities and has been used in a lot of gene editing research. Zebrafish is very common to South Asia and is actually in fact native to the Indian subcontinent. It is found in the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. Fish farms have spread them to the whole world. They live in shallow waters like lakes and ponds and even rice paddies and in waters that are murky with some vegetation. These animals feed on both plankton and smaller worms. These fish are now a common pet and are found in lots of aquariums. Since they're so conducive to genetic manipulation, there started to appear transgenic fish that could glow green, red, blue and yellow with fluorescent proteins. They were given genes from fluorescent jellyfish for the blue and green colors and from corals for red. These were first done for research purposes but a company trademarked and patented them in 2013. They are sold now under the brand name Glowfish by a Texas-based company and come in a variety of glowing colors. They're the first genetically engineered species to become commercially available. Of course, once they became commercially available, they started to leak into nature. In 2014, a single glowfish was found in the wild in the US, but it did not reproduce, likely because it was killed by a predator. But in Brazil now, for the first time in the southern hemisphere and for the first time in the wild, these transgenic glowing fish are now mating. In 2015, these fish were first spotted in slow creeks right near an ornamental aquaculture center. The fish likely escaped from one of these centers 4,500 ponds, all of which drain water into these streams. The ones that glow red and green especially are more vivid and bright even in natural light. But in these streams, the fish don't have any natural predators, so they are thriving there. By 2017, they were found in five different creeks in the southeastern part of Brazil. As of 2020, they've spread to other water bodies in Brazil as well. Zebrafish reproduce all year round and this activity peaks during the monsoons. These transgenic fish, however, reach sexual maturity even quicker, so they reproduce faster and spread more. They're also omnivores, so they eat all kinds of insects and worms and algae and native plankton and vegetation and much more. The researchers studied the fish in all of these different water bodies and analyzed how they were doing in the wild and affecting the local ecosystem. What is panning out now with large numbers of these fish out in the wild reproducing is the first stage of non-native invasion. In Brazil, the fish were banned in pet stores and aquariums but have now started to appear in all parts of the country in different natural water bodies. Illegal breeding has continued and still continues. Now the researchers are worried that the fluorescence, the protein that expresses this fluorescence, might transfer in nature and could alter the ecosystem overall. The introduction of non-native species is always a threat to local ecosystems. There are over 70 non-native fishes in these Brazilian waters that are aquarium-bred and which affect the local marine ecosystem. 
When non-native species start to alter the ecology in a harmful way, they are then termed invasive species. And invasive species are a pain to local ecosystems. They reproduce quickly and they spread rapidly. They outcompete native species for resources and can also kill them. They typically coexist with native species for a period of time before taking over as the process occurs over a period of time. Invasive species can also change ecosystems quickly. Plants do this especially by interfering with nutrient cycling and water cycling. Invasive animals can be destructive in other ways. One of the best known historic examples of invasive species is the brown rat that came from China and was introduced into the Pacific Ocean islands like New Zealand and Hawaii by explorers. Here in these islands, they destroyed birds and reptiles that were native. Humans are the biggest invasive species, of course, and humans have also taken animals like dogs, cats and rats to various islands and parts of the world where they did not exist before. Island ecosystems have evolved for millions of years in isolation and therefore they are the most affected by the introduction of invasive species. Australia, such a large country, is one of the best examples. Cats, rats and rabbits were introduced into Australia in the 19th century by settlers and they led to degraded lands that were overgrazed by rabbits. Dogs and cats also killed other native species in the country. The cane toad was brought in to kill beetles in sugarcane fields but ended up killing very important native species like bees as well as killing larger animals that consumed them because they were poisonous. A famous invasive species ongoing rivalry is the one between the Burmese python that was introduced to Florida and the American alligator right now. In many Pacific islands, snakes were brought in to control rats and other rodents and they have since caused the extinction of various birds and reptiles and even bats. Marine ecosystems have also not been spared by the effects of invasive species all over the world. Another major side effect of introducing non-native species is disease. Early European colonists brought about diseases like smallpox, common cold, HIV and some STDs to various parts of the globe. Now with these zebrafish, they could pose a threat to small ecosystems in the short term but many ecologists believe that they would likely not pose a threat in the longer term when they enter larger waters because they will encounter natural predators and their vivid colors will be a detriment so the fluorescence and the vivid coloration will likely not spread too much in the wild as well. But the long-term consequences are not known for certain and cannot be guessed. With commercial exploitation and subsequent illegal breeding of transgenic animals, there is always risk and this case is yet another example why more stringent regulation is required in the pet trade and pet breeding business.